open the meeting. Second. We we'll move second to open. All in favor? That's a vote. Okay, we have the special town meeting, uh, our regular council meeting of January 22nd, 28th, and the 5th. Now let's see who all was here. Did you do the warrant? Well, yes, I'll do the warrant. I just want to make sure we have enough people to do the meeting. Craig is here. Agent up is it there. Yeah, it should be good. Okay. Um, Craig, you want to do the warrants? Yep. Make a motion we approve the following warrants. Warrant number 69, amount of $16,370.94. Warrant number 70, the amount of $35,465.35. Warrant number 71, totaling $38,932.32. Warrant number 72, the amount of $16,445.45. Second. We'll move and second to approve warrant 69, 70, 71, and 72 are presented. All in favor? That's a vote. Up next is our approval of our minutes of our regular council meeting of January 22nd, 28th, and the February 5th. Accept the minutes from the January 22nd uh, meeting. I second that. I move the second to accept the minutes of our January 22nd meeting. All in favor? I'm not going to vote on that because I stepped out. Second to accept our January 28th minutes as written. All in favor? That's a vote. All right, and now for February 5th. Should we approve the minutes from the February 5th meeting as written? Move and second to approve our minutes from our regular our special meeting on February 5th with the Dailyville School Board. <coughs> All in favor? And that is a vote. All right, department head reports. We got our fuel usage that's in there. And our chart. Transfer station, Jamie, everything's good up there? Yeah, pretty quiet. Um, I have talked to the gentlemen that do our metal force. They just, they've got electrical gremlins in their machine that they've been trying to chase chase out, and, and uh, but they haven't forgot about me, and we'll get it as soon as they get it up and running. Okay. Any questions for Jamie at transfer? So moving on, public works. How's our sand doing, Jamie? Um, I think I've used more in the past week than I have all winter. I've used quite a bit of salt. Uh, like today, we uh, plowed and sanded twice, went back out and salted, let Mother Nature do some work, and then got the grader out and started scraping. And um, 
South Princeton's still a mess, but I just run out of time today to get it. And we're going to try to get everything tomorrow that we didn't get today with the grade and get the heavy stuff scraped off. If it's frozen, if Mother Nature doesn't cooperate, it's just like trying to scrape solid steel. But you're just wearing out equipment and you've got to get the breakthrough. And so we are working on it. Do you think we're going to have enough sand to get to April 15th? Depends on the weather. <coughs> Do we have a, I mean, we've, we've had a great winter so far as far as not using a lot. It's just amazing what one ice storm, and there's no way to plan for it. I don't want to have three or 4,000 yards every year. I think we might get it, um, but I've always got a backup plan, so we'll so be you fine. Yeah. Got that <coughs> right. And we haven't had too much snow yet in this winter, so they might be able to break open a pit if they had to. Yeah. And they have, they take very good care of the school lots, John and Steve both always down there. It makes a big difference when those kids are coming into school and they can travel in there without wrecking a car. So. And, and we've had, we have a lot of people. We've gone through probably, uh, probably in the last two days we've gone through 100 yards just people coming in and getting it. And getting we've gone through a lot. You know, it's a service we've always provided, but stuff like this, they really can go through a lot of it. Yeah. All right. Anything for Jamie at Public Works? Moving on, public library. I'm busy since Christmas. Anything new down there, Craig? Uh, no, I don't believe so. I'm just keep an eye on the lot. It's, we have some people going in there and using the free internet. It's, it's lasts a little bit longer than when they're open. And I've noticed some garbage a few times, but it hasn't been too bad. So that's why I haven't stopped in to say anything. So Craig, we'll, we'll keep an eye on. I did mention to Molly he is going to wait till spring to do the carpets again. So okay, great. I, I should have got back to you before, yeah. but he said it's spring. Excellent, thank you. All right, moving on to Parks and Rec. Mike, how we doing? Outstanding. Good, everything going good? Yes. Perfect. Anything for Mike and the Rec Department? Fire Department, John, Brandon? Yeah. Things going good, good, good. Staying busy. What am what am calls are this year? They test the uh, they test the packs today. Packs packs today. Yeah. Yeah. Any problem? Yeah. <clears throat> Anything for John or Brandon? Bailerville Police. Bob, how are we doing? Very good. Excellent. Wastewater treatment. How are we? Have we gotten any pricing from Annalise as far as for budgetary? For uh, budget? No, for, not for next year. No. I'm but guessing your budgetary. We're already in, in getting the into the, um, We did that fix that we were looking at about a month ago. Right. Just an update on that. Um, we were looking at something approaching 15000 or a little bit more. And we managed to get everything put together for probably a little less than 1100 And he was able to fabricate the parts he needed. He ordered one part that was 888 and then fabricated the rest based on stuff that he ordered. So it worked out nicely. All right. Well, we probably should get on her about getting so we're ready for budget season. She is coming down on the 18th of this month to go over the Main Street Main project. Street project. <coughs> All right, nothing for Annalise. All right, department head reports. All right, you're going to talk to us first about the, finance, the, the franchise, franchise agreement. The franchise agreement, we've got finally, they've finally put it on paper. Mm -hmm. I thought it was 94. So I finally put one on paper. The only thing is I would, uh, I would also have you guys sign it. I'd like to table it until we can have a discussion with them because they're trying to revise down from 3% to 2% the amount of franchise fee that they sell, they give us. Well, the, the question I've got is, is there going to be a conflict with Pioneer? No. Pa they, they saw Pioneer's contract with us. They must have gone through Pioneer. And they based this on Pioneer's 
Pioneer is willing to pay up to 5%, whatever the other, any other uh, vendors are paying. Right now, we're getting 3% from Spectrum. I'd like to table this until such time as we get a, a readout from them because, again, you know, Pioneer is willing to pay up to 5 These guys are offering 2 okay. They're not, they're, they don't seem like they really want to be that competitive. All right, so we'll table the franchise agreement until our council meeting, next council meeting, which is when then 20, I can't do it. That's way too far away. <laughs> the 25th. All right. Okay, got a new one here for a road toll for the Boy Scouts. Uh, Friends of the Scouts. Roman, to do June 12th. And May 15th. It doesn't conflict with any of the other ones I looked them up. Okay. So, right, just to get the original so you can sign it. So. He reached out to me just because he didn't know the process to go through, but he wanted everybody here to know that anybody in Bailyville that right. had the scouts was Bailyville scouts. However, we, <coughs> are, we, we do have an action pack <coughs> schedule for the spring. Oh. We've got, what, six of them in about a <coughs> one-month period? A little bit more than a month? Did we, have a, on the one <laughs> did we ever put a restriction on how many, like cows do? Do we have a restriction? Callus has restrictions. That was <laughs> yeah, it's like 12 a year, and it's a bidding process. you got to apply for it. And then it's, yeah. Yeah, it's a process. It is a process, because yeah. we go it's through the fire department. It's street. <laughs> Fireman's boot, I've seen more than 12 times. <laughs> <laughs> but we move around a little bit. <laughs> but yeah, we, we do have it. The spring is fairly packed. Well, they want to have two. Now, these are dates that they want to have. These aren't dates that they want to rain propose date, no. a rain date. No. Okay. Once you approve them, are you allowed to change them? And, and when I ask that, it's just because of the Main Street construction this year. If they have to be milling that section of town on that day or have heavy equipment around that day, are we kind of able to move them? Or yeah, I, think we I can, hate to stop production. I think we can push them out. Okay. Yeah. Usually on the weekend, they mill on the weekends. Yeah. Um, are these on the weekend? Because I don't solve them on weekdays because yeah. they want to get the it's crowds. It's usually a Thursday or a Friday. Because I drive to them. 20 times a day in big wave. I told Jason to make sure that the mill pay pay week, so we yeah. figured it out. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, We've always no, talked yeah, about these road tolls, but it's never Christmas. really it's come to where we've had so many. That's a Friday. The 12th is 12th Friday. 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 I, would, I would say in the future we'd we'll probably look at them we're taking over. We'll try to limit maybe, maybe a dozen during the course of the Well, I mean, how many do we have? <laughs> six? Either five or six. I can't remember. I think the. We and we normally have, have at least four a year, anyways. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, these are the only new ones. Right. So, I mean, they've asked for two dates, but the holiday committee does one at one time and another one at a different time. So. Actually, we haven't even got the holiday committee one. Yeah, and then Legion does them, and then Rebecca's them. I think we can discuss the at least the rules around this at a different time. But I think it's fair that we give these guys the same opportunity that we gave, you know, whether it's the holiday committee or the American Legion. I would recommend, and then maybe we could have Chris draw up some um, things regarding future road tolls. I can work with Jamie when it comes to where the construction is and where they can set up and, and be the safest. It would be obvious. Oh, yeah. <laughs> to us. Yeah, yeah true. Right. Anyone want to make the motion or do you want me to make it? Or? Are we uh, approving the motion for the 15th? Or well, we're going to change it because he's got the 15th on here and this says the 22nd, okay. so it must be May 15th and June 12th. Application, he's got June 12th and May 15th. Oh, yeah, that was me. Thank you for that. Sorry. 
before I copy Chris because I'm going to move this quickly. Um, I move that the Bailey Town Council vote to allow the Friends of the Scouts to hold voluntary roll civic civic road tolls on May 15th and June 12th. No second. It's been moved and second to allow the uh, Friends of the Scouts to have a road toll on May 15th and June 12th. All in favor? And that is a vote. I can't remember if the October truck put it now. I'm thinking that they did. And then it's there too. But Jason, he told me to just let him know if it conflicts with anybody else's and he'd change it. But I checked the other two. I just didn't remember to check out October truck. All right, we've got a sewer abatement here. Like 12 abatement. So 12. There's a list in your packet. Why do we have so many? Well, the first two were water shut off that we didn't get notice of, so the bill went out for the sewer. The sugar. Okay. One of them was a broken meter, broke the pipe. That was the burned one down at 162. And the other ones we don't have an explanation for. We just took an average of what their bills have been, and they went sky high through the roof, and we couldn't get any answers from the water district. So, All right, but shouldn't we come up with our internal control on this? I mean, we're sending out bills that we're now abating. Wouldn't it be better to fix this before it goes out to the hands of the homeowner? I mean, because some of these are substantial, obviously. I mean, $355, $391, those are pretty good size readings. Yeah. The one thing, though, that, that the abatement does give us is that you've got a record where it was approved as opposed to if we did it internally, you know, there's sort of like no record of the process, so to speak. Well, it's got to be a record of the process if you're re I mean, yeah. don't we take the sewer or the water reading and we'll just say for, for we'll just use Bruce White here for an example. It's a wrong reading, so based on the gallons that was submitted from BUD, we made out our bill according to that. This ended up to Bruce White's house. Now we're abating it because he's come back and said the, me the reading was wrong? No, I th what, what we've been, what we've, some of these are, you know, their normal reading runs in this range and all of a sudden they're in this range and there's no explanation for what's occurred and, and talking to the water company. You know, in, in one case there was somewhere where someone was trying to <coughs> hold the meter, hold the water into the meter with duct tape and silicone, but, uh, you know, you had uh, others that, you know, for no explanation, no, no apparent reason their water bill was, you know, jacked up. And some of them were, um, like Joanna's, for instance, Bailey, she had a temporary water line for the construction. It was going through her basement or hose. It, it's got to have something to do with that. Hers is always $60. And like that, on Paul Street ones, you know, some of it's got to do with the construction and hooking up those. Some appear they might have been part of, you know, part of the construction issue. Because Joanna's was one of the ones that, like, they were almost completely done leaving town. Hey, you didn't fix, you haven't unhooked that one yet. And they, that was like one of the last things they did before they left town. So do we think this is an isolated case that we're when history repeats itself, we're not going to see we're that? We're hoping it does. I mean, we'll, know, we'll know next quarter. And like account 327, Ronnie and Ruthie Seely, that's just asinine. There's two people that live in their house. It's been $60 since they moved in. And then the last two quarters, they went to those amounts. Those are what we're abating, get them back down to the right amount. And, I mean, there was just no reason for it. And they've asked the, the water district, they've gone to the BUD trustee meeting, you know. Right, but we've sent this bill out to them. The, the homeowners gotten it. So could we potentially, at least before these reach the homeowners, fix them. get mail, mm -hmm. fix them, and have us approve them rather than send them out and, you know? Yeah, because yeah, I, I mean, I said that because the, the auditors, do, they do not like all these abatements. Right. They, don't, they don't like them. They just I talked to Karen. She was getting ready to send these bills up. She said she was getting a lot of bills that seemed wrong, and all of them were like a Broadway during that construction, yeah. house after house. And it was all happening during the construction, so 
seen that it was connected somehow. And then last year, this last, it seemed like Summit had their share of this year too. So were these actually abated from the water department? Did the water department no. refund their side of it? No, the water department refuses to give anybody any any refunds on theirs. I can see why that would make it difficult to catch it then. It'd, yeah. it'd be different if they called you up and said, well, hey, we got 12 from here that we overcharged, we're taking it back down, right. abate those ones, but if they're not taking anything off, then it's hard to catch them. Mm -hmm. So we'll work on getting that resolved before it goes up the bill. Something, it's just, it's crazy to have this many abatements. But it could be related to the construction, so. Does anyone have any questions on any of the abatements that are listed here? So the BUD did not abate them any for the water. No. So they still have to pay their water bill. Yeah. So but they refuse their their policy unless it's changed with Guardy come up with was they were not abating any water bills. For because, their equipment, for reading. because their equipment didn't make wrong readings or that's what they claim. So these abatements are above and beyond what they're right. They're bringing the our Ruth and the Ruth and Ronnie okay. Sealy, for example. So their their bill that went out would have been four hundred and fifty, four hundred and sixty. Yeah, dollars. we're abating it back to sixty dollars. What what it's been. What so we're been. so we're just kind of going with the uh, the baseline that we're assuming everybody's not going. Yeah, we did an above. average of what they yeah. what they've okay. been doing. Well, last year we did a, a, the entire street of Broadway mm -hmm. after the construction was seen, and, and a lot of these are within the construction mm -hmm. zone. Some are, some aren't. Yeah. <coughs> All right, I make a motion we approve the proposed sewer abatements. Second. It's been moved and seconded to approve the sewer abatements as listed. All in favor? That's a vote. Does it make sense to know whether, I don't know if we need to put this on our action list mm -hmm. or whatever. Sure. We need to get this straightened out because if we're doing our part, that means, mm -hmm. to me, obviously, something's wrong. They didn't build too much water. So we need to find out why they can't change their policy to match ours somehow. I mean, you know, and one of the things, the one that, you know, where it's just leaking by the meter and just rolling onto the basement floor, that's going into the basement drain. The assumption is that basement drain goes to the storm drain. I'm not sure that in fact is happening because we may be treating that if it's if it's going to the sewer. A lot of these people did not complain, but they've not paid the bill either because they're probably mad. Some of them have come in and said, you know, something's wrong, but would it make sense? To call these ones that are listed that we've abated. I'm going to abate them and then send them a supplement. printout with um, the new amount that's due on it. Due, okay. Because Ronnie and Ruthie would have paid theirs right. a long time ago, but they were pushing it. So. Okay, moving on. The school cafeteria project. Um, as you may or may not know, stumbled upon uh, what I see is some issues regarding the construction of the uh, new cafetorium. Uh, it appears that it is uh, right now under budgeted by at least 1.5 million dollars. Um, I'm not a hundred percent sure that uh, I think it's closer to two million that it's actually under um, based on the paperwork that uh, the superintendent provided us the other night from Nickerson and O'Day regarding the completion. There is a email in your uh, packet regarding um, the attorneys from the school department wanting us to take the money that was approved for the renovation projects at the Woodland Elementary School and the Woodland High School and send that back out to the voters to spend that money to fix, to finish the completion of the um, capitorium. For two reasons I don't support that. One, it's wrong. And two, it really comes down to you're your taking your taxpayers 
and you're selling a bill of goods and then reselling them because mm -hmm. at the end of the day, the projects that need to be done based on the um, professionals that come up with the to-do list at both locations need to be done. We under budgeted for the cafetorium project and we still have not completed all the renovation project. Um, I do support if they want to take this back to a referendum vote for the people to go out and actually vote to see if they approve the money to complete the cafetorium project. Um, had a lot of time to since the uh, fifth to think about this and I I'm still can't grasp how you can be that far off on a project. Um, some of the things that I've kicked around is um, maybe it's time we just completed the building with the money that we have and, and do a redo, see what, what they can make out of what monies are there. I think this is going to be a hard sell to the um, citizens it's something they want, that's great. They'll, they'll vote it up or down. Um, but you're talking a substantial amount of money that I just, to this date, no one's been able to give me an answer on how they got that messed up. They, they don't know how they missed the budget by that much? And there's, there's no good answers to it, period. That's no one. And the sad part is until about a month ago, we saw 1.6 million was the number. Apparently last April, or actually even last March, 3.1 3.1 was what they were kicking around. Right. Seems like a lot of money for a cafeteria. 1.6 would have, would have been, I think, you know, it wouldn't have been extravagant. It would have been, it would have been fine, but 3.1, that's a hell of a, that's a hell of a, that's, $800 a square foot. Part of the issue still comes down to, if in Steve and Greg, you were at this meeting, um, the uh, heating system that's in the new section, um, in addition to the renovation money that's there for the old system in the high school, um, how that ties together, if they in fact do tie together. Um, that's where I come up with, if you, if you look at the paper that Nickerson and O'Day gave to the school board and that we received on the 5th, the final number to build that complete project was $3.6 million. That's $2 million more than what was allotted for it. I feel we have to give this a fair shake to go to the voters. Um, we've got a project that started. The school is in need of a cafeteria. Um, I, I think maybe between now and then we can have some more uh, meetings with the uh, school board and, and the um, superintendent and the uh, general contractor, but um, there's quite a process that has to happen to make this happen. Um, it has to go to a referendum, which uh, the, vote, the uh, question has to be drawn up legally. Um, then there's a time frame, there's public hearings, then uh, finally gets to go to a vote. So there's a lot of things that have to happen which ties into this email that you received from, that was in our packet from Nickerson and O'Day from our car award that I fully get where they're coming from. They, they've got a business to run. Um, but there's no way that we can just cave to what their needs are based on what they need to do to run their business. Um, we, we dropped the ball on this. I say we, um, yeah, I'm a taxpayer in this town and I voted for this project and now we're here asking for two more million or well, at least 1.5. So is 1.5 going to cover it or are they going to come back and ask for another? I can't answer that. Supposedly answer that. the, the 3.1 contract that they signed for was completion of the project. Been adders to this that's put it up to about well, the three. They, they had tried to do that now. Supposedly, we're back at 2 8. Supposedly, well, regardless, the paper that said if we sign it on 2 1, yeah. it was 3.8 million dollars. So what, 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 I can't remember back 
when we took the town vote on referendum for the money, how much was it? One point six. This is a one they signed a contract for even if it was That's the question. I mean why gotta be some accountability there. there. I, I think I think personally I think back last March, April time frame, the intent was well we'll just take money from these projects and put it over here. I guess and, that not, and not do these hundred fifty, two hundred thousand dollars a month. Well, you, but even still, you've got two different. One went to us at town meeting, or went to the ta taxpayers at town meeting, and the other went at a referendum. They're two separate issues, and those have to. Those are one was for repairs for the two schools, repairs and renovations. The other one was for the cafeteria, and you know, in, in my mind, you really can't mix those. Should we all be the um, Well, we already talked to our yeah. attorneys regarding that. You can't mix. Well, the the other thing is uh, the superintendent talked today about uh, he had talked to the original bond council for this, who said, well, you know, and and he, again he was speaking to Bill and Bill was saying, well, can I take the money from one to the other? And he said, yeah, but you'd ha still have to have a vote to take the money from the one article and put it into the other other article. But that means you have quite undone a few broke. projects you that are undone. Yeah. And you sold the taxpayers on getting them done. Right. You know, those those needed to be done long before cafeteria was. Well, the fact of the matter is, is if the town would have voted the cafetorium project down, that money was for renovations. Now, yeah. regardless whether that 3.4 million come in at 3.2 million that they save money on projects, great, but. That was for renovation sides of the project. Now this cafetorium project obviously has escalated into a lot more than $1.6 million to build, construct, and get to a usable building. Now to me it comes up to the taxpayers whether they want to go back out and allot that amount of money to have a operating cafetorium or whatever. And, and 1.2 of that, 1.6, is already committed. And if they vote it down, we're no better off than we are right now. Well, the one thing that, I mean, in regard, I don't know how the vote's going to go, but you have a budget there, and that's why, the, is it time to look at a revamp of the design of the building to come in under specs? I don't know. They see the walls and let the roof go up. Let's so there's enough money to cover for the walls and roof to be the auditorium. Is that correct, Craig, to your understanding? We should have the building down there with footings, four walls and a roof, some minor electrical stuff from what I can gather, some minor plumbing. And, and that's going to be a put your 1.2, so it would leave $400,000 to do blank. Now the kitchen. The kitchen stuff has been Temporary. bought, but that includes sold. the kitchen equipment. Right. So it could still be an operational cafeteria. Mm, could it? It doesn't have a floor. It would have a dirt floor, I'm, I'm guessing. Um, but it gives the town the opportunity to make a decision how they want to go forward from that point. To tell you the truth, my, my first impression would be cut ties with the, the contractor and build it as the taxpayers allow, if and when the taxpayers allow. Sure would have been nice to know all this back mm -hmm. in April when last year. Mm -hmm. So we could you know, before any ground was broken that we could make our decision, take it to the town and decide. Well the part that I don't understand to that, Steve, is up until the other night, that was the first contract I'd ever uh, that we even got to see that somebody signed and it dates back to March. So that contract in March was signed off at a three point million three point one million dollar tag. Who signed it? Bill Braun. Double what was it? And, and we didn't know that the price was anything different until what? Craig well, probably Craig sometime in January. I, I would say even December we've had, the, Craig and I have been kicking yeah, this, uh, that something hasn't been right December? about it. December 17th. Yeah. So I mean that's, that's more than eight months after the contract was signed. And the, the sad part is the contractor was under the impression that 
and everything was go. All mm -hmm. But it still doesn't answer if all your renovation projects come in and, and they cost what they said they were going to cost. And the 1.6, you're still over by 1.5 to $2 million on your project. No matter how you dice this up, however you want to play, and I'll call it the shell game because that's exactly what it is, is a shell game. When you're taking this and putting it down to here to cover for this, and then all of a sudden this didn't get done, and two years later you're going back to your taxpayer saying, we need to put new heating unit into the high school and it's going to cost us $1.5 million that was there, here, the then got down here. By the way, it was going to be done two years ago. Right. So, you know, this is... Um, Unfortunate. Um, I, I don't know moving forward what the right answers are, but I think I think we need to have a little bit better, um, maybe not control, but knowledge oversight. of what's being signed. Maybe old, more oversight. Um, maybe that's through Chris um, getting that to us. But um, this sure as hell shouldn't end up like this. Agreed. So I guess the two questions that are laid out here on the table based on this email from uh, Nickerson O'Day and the conversation that Chris had with the superintendent today is, do we want to word the article as take money that's already there to the 3.4 million and kick it down, and we'll call it the shell article, to bring down to cover to build this capitorium? Or do we want to just bite the bullet and say, here's what it's going to cost to complete these projects? And that's the question that really needs to be answered. I will tell you, I do not support, and no one can convince me, on why we would ever take money of money that was allotted to do renovations. Because even if you save $400,000 out of that, I'll guarantee you there's $400,000 worth of renovations that still need to be done to that school. Shouldn't be around computer to pay Paul. At the end of the day, we're going to have to. Down the road, we're still going to end up biting the bullet and having to do the renovations. I, I mean, let's let's exactly let's just what happened this weekend, Craig, to the junior high school. Those are unforeseen. Day. Those are unforeseen things that are going to happen. It would have been nice to have, say, in a maintenance fund, two hundred and fifty thousand dollars that can go and fix those things that are going to crop up. Because you still have an old school that has band-aids on it. If we had the heating system that we're supposed to get, I would have had an alert on my phone that would have dinged me and I would have known we wouldn't have this issue. But we don't have that with the system we have now. And I still don't understand why we don't have that system because that should have went out to bid back when the money was approved. Mm -hmm. You say it wasn't that approved a while ago? Yeah. I mean, I don't understand that there's, I mean, the roof, done like that. Mm -hmm. Windows, done like that. Elementary school wall, done like that. But the high school that they've been kicking around now for at least seven years? <coughs> I think the number happens to be conveniently close to what he needed to. I'm glad you said that. Uh, yeah. I think you're 100%. Um, I would support the second option of wording. I'm um, just saying this, you know, if we put it out to referendum saying, this is what's going to cost complete because I think the first option is saying let's take money from here. But it, it just becomes confusing the taxpayers. Yeah, well, people are going to think that's no big deal. Right now, we're just going to right. borrow some of this and back. They don't think it's left over money. And then, say, hey, by the yeah. way, we need some more money. And I said, didn't we just? So it's it's really just being more upfront to say, hey, um, we're short. You know, the, the one thing about government is there are times when you have to spend money in a, in a line that you hadn't planned on but you, you need to show where you actually spent it so people know what happened right. rather than well yeah I'm going right. to take my uniform money and, and buy mm -hmm. you know tires for the truck um, it gets real confusing. You know, that's, you put it where it, where it belongs and this is, and where it belongs is get mm -hmm. those jobs done that we agreed to instead of, yeah. like you said the shell game did the school board already prove the no, they're they're having they're they're having a meeting tonight, but that's the normal one up in East Range. But they're going to be having a meeting tomorrow to approve 
basically the same thing we are. But I think there will be a, a an effort to try and have an article worded to move the money from one art one um, article to another. What does that mean to money? Is it public? Hmm? Is it public? Yeah. Yeah. It's We're not public. Well, at the end of the day, we're the ones that pro that approve the article. Yeah. Yeah. True. true. But they, they can propose the article, you just you just well, don't have to recommend. If time is of the essence here, yes. then why kick this can down the road? Because they're, 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 they are going to try to get their cake and eat it too, so to speak. Mm -hmm. Well, I think we should go with this and go from there. <laughs> go bring it before the people to get the one. Isn't it going to take the same amount of time? Mm -hmm. What? Isn't it going to take the same amount of time? It'll take the same amount of time. The other, the other thing, too, is that this guy's trying to... The contractor is saying, "Hey, listen, I got I got subs that are ready to leave if you don't have this done." That's really not important at this point. Yeah, uh, at least in my fun. mind, in my mind is get this sorted out legally, and then you can go forward from there. If the subs are all gone at that point, fine. You, you shut it down, and you wait till you can get prices for what you need. Well, I, I guess then, if this is the case on what you're saying there. If, the, if they have the meeting tomorrow night and the school board comes back with their, how they want to see this article as we're going to pull money from the original uh, renovation to finish the, the Capitorian project, then I feel I would support putting on the town council no longer supports the spending of that money. Unless it's used for the projects that was, you know, the renovation project that was proposed for. Any input, any uh, output, or anything on that, guys? Yeah, I understand that. Um, you know, from the contractor's perspective, I don't know if this breaks the contract. You know, that was signed with them. You know, it may, it may bring the entire project to a halt completely, and we're left with just well, the one point two is already submitted, so that will be completed. And we and and that's where you might have changed the obstacle. Well, and, and, and again, it may, be, it may be that I'm just making a, a suggestion that it may be better off if, let's say, the voters do not go for the additional money. It may be better off just to close it up and wait till you can do it either piecemeal or get the voters to vote to complete it. <coughs> and that's, again, why you may be at a point where it's, it's a building with a redesign as opposed to completed project as it stands on paper today. But is, is there any chance at this point that the contractor could back out? He can't back out on what he signed for as far as getting four walls and a roof. That's as far okay. as he's committed as to. As long as we've got, yeah. The subcontractors come in on the finished work. Okay. Which, I mean, Nickerson and Day is pretty much just the general contractor that hires everyone to do all this work to begin with that okay. oversees that it's done correctly. Craig, what do you have to say with this? We met with the school board, and when we left that meeting the other day, we decided we were going to put this up and let the people decide. That's what I'm going to go with. And they'll say yes, or they'll say no. And then we're going to have decisions to make from that point forward. That would be the way I look at it. Steve? I don't see where the <coughs> really have a choice. <coughs> we, we had Chris look into the lawyer piece of it, and has to go to the voter. Mm -hmm. So I would say we need all the renovations completed and a cafeteria completed if that's yeah, what the outfitted. residents of the town want. So you're going to have to go to the town for the extra money. Now, where do we stand if the school board, Chris, comes back and says, no, we want this article written as X? Then you basically have, need to have a come to Jesus meeting with the school board and say, listen, um, you, you can have it that way, but we're but the, the, you know, the council's going to say, we do not recommend this article, and that carries a pretty that carries a pretty uh, good influence upon people if the, if the council will support the article. You can, I, however, the other article you can still run. I would just, I I think I think the school needs to know that if, if they go if they try to do any, anything other than go out and get the right additional money they need. Well, they're going to have to go out to a referendum either way. But if they if they 
if they go any way other than the additional money for the cafeteria, that they're going to probably run into a roadblock with the town council, and, and it's and it would be doomed to fail simply because of that. But when it comes to the final say, don't you guys have the final say on that? The voters have the final say. <coughs> oh, yeah, the voters yeah. do. But as far as this goes. But as far as I, you know, that's a, the other thing, too, is, you know, who gets to put the article before the people? Typically, the school will tell us what articles they want for that. They're, you know, to put it out. But at the same time, it's also got to pass the straight face test of the town council. Right, because we've always had the opportunity, and it's never been done in this town, to reject the school budget. We've never done it. We've always went based on what they have submitted to us. We may have said, hey, can you guys go back and see if you can trim some? But we've never outright rejected a budget that's been submitted, that I'm aware of. Are you aware? You have more tenure in this town than I do. So I'm not aware of that. So, I mean, they need, in my opinion, need to understand that the, the, what's being done here is going to cost the taxpayers more money, period. And what they're trying to propose is that shell game of moving money from line X down to here and at some point we're going to have to replenish that line to finish that project. Yeah, that boiler goes tomorrow. That money's gone. Mm -hmm. We're going to end up eating it. Well, again, I can't answer why that boiler, that should have been out to bid this summer. The money was there and it should have been already done. We're, we're going to be a year later before we even spent that money on a boiler system. No one can answer that question. I haven't even seen the design. Or the specs for it, or the bid specs that went out to whatever companies to say, can you bid on this project? Sounds like there's a lot of questions the school board can answer. Well, tried to track down a set of plans yeah. today. That was. I'm working on it. What? I'm working on it. So I know for a fact that the plans are there. It's well, they're, in the, they're in the build, They're in that in the trailer, but the gentleman was not there at the time. Well, I would recommend that we do the motion, uh, referendum. I'm not comfortable with the 1.5. Um, and I'll tell you, but the 1.5 gets us to the mm -hmm. at least completion of that. Because you think it may not be quite enough? Based on what was presented to us, it's not enough. But again, there's some savings that have happened and potential savings that are there moving on. Uh, some things that they've taken out and, and can take out. But again, we talked, you know, the reason why we were thinking extra money, well, what if they didn't think of something in the parking lot and things like that? Well, again, like I said, I was up at 3 o'clock in the morning and Craig can attest to that. Um, the numbers don't add up. They just don't add up. But for the building, the price, you guys saw the pay for it. The guaranteed maximum price at that time was what? 3.1. 3.1. We Supposedly that number is 2.8. It supposedly went up to what, 3 point something, 3.3 3 or 3.4, now it's down to 2.8, supposedly, yes. supposedly. The other thing that the superintendent has done is said, well, he's, uh, he's applied for and gotten two other grants for some things that he feels he can use the money for that the town would get, or that we would get reimbursed 30% on, on the items, but at the same time, it's still a shell game. You're still taking you're still taking money that's already been raised by the taxation, by taxation mm -hmm. and you're and you're going to move it over to here and then get a grant to cover what you've moved. Exactly, and it's not free money. No, it's seventy percent that's got to be paid back. That's exactly right. And thirty percent is still coming out of your taxes one way or the other. There's nothing free about a grant. Referendum question? Well, I, I we think I think you need to go forward to to tell the attorney to to draft and, and, get, and get it going, so that we can in fact make this happen. He'll, he'll send us the the actual oh, question. Yeah. Because we still have time once it's drafted to change language. There's a, there's a window that we've got that we can actually get some language changed if need be in that it might it might be the dollar amount. All right, I move to 
uh, the Bailyville Town Council vote to approve a referendum question to be drafted and put to the public authorizing the additional borrowing of an amount not to exceed $1.5 million for the completion of a construction uh, cafetorium addition at the high school. Second. It's been moved and second to uh, have the Bailyville, Count, Bailyville Town Council vote to approve a referendum question to be drafted and put to the public authorizing the borrowing an amount not to exceed $1.5 million the completion and construction of the cafeteria addition to the Woodland Junior Senior High School. All in favor? That is the vote. Uh, task list update, uh, just uh, very quickly. Uh, CES quote for lot 34, uh, Josh Bragg said he'd start working on that to try and get us uh, where we're going with that. The school numbers for the ongoing projects we've already got in hand. The question is um, wh whether they make sense or not. And we've had our joint meeting with the school board. Um, have also uh, the letters to the foreclosed property owners, people who either we foreclosed because of taxes or sewer or both. I sent some letters out last week to try and get um, those folks in to come see us uh, and actually start making payments on those. Because um, in reality, we own the property. So I want to get that resolved. Yeah, we'll sign them back their property, but they have to come in and pay everything they own. And that's the key. So it's, it's time to start rattling um, those accounts and see what we can make happen. How does the council feel about actually putting people out of the houses? We made a stand that we would support that. Okay, good. That's my experience. I've, I've had both. One town where the day it foreclosed, you put it off bid. Well, as a, as a matter of fact, there's a house on Main Street that that was the exact action that the council took, and now the person that owns the house is a renter. Yes. Well, we also have a house on Main Street that we apparently own, but we, we don't dare go in. Mm -hmm. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> I'd get David Barnum with the form or what would he first? <laughs> now, he might not be alive now. Now, he was seen what last spring? Oh, he's <coughs> what November, I think, is the well, neighbor that lives in the garage across the street. It's all it's all. Okay. Yeah, I've probably seen him riding his bike around about the same time. Yeah. But I haven't seen him since. Would would not hurt to contact if we if next time if you guys see them, so let them know that we need to talk to them. Yeah, I'll send them again. <laughs> hey. With an escort. I, 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 I've had worse people. Oh, I don't know about that. Yeah, <laughs> right. Uh, the student plane grid auger project we talked about. Yep. Is that all you have? That's all I have. All right. <coughs> Moving on to public comments, Bob. Sure. Um, Marilyn? I just, um, again, from the last meeting, um, part of the action list, if I had mentioned about Chris maybe doing the letters to the property maintenance violators. Um, I think he's going to get more results if he sends the letters. So mm -hmm. just again, yeah. Follow, follow um, through with yeah. yeah. Okay. Is that it? Jamie? Nothing. All right. I was told gay. <laughs> John? So was I. <laughs> Brandon? Have we talked any more about a lean-to off the side of the building? Lean to us. No, not, not, not lately, no, but you guys are running out of space we, quickly. Uh, yeah, we need to barely fit in around the trucks we've got. I, uh, we need to look at possibly a lean to coming off in that, on that far side of the building. Yeah, that'd be good with the new public safety building, building, too. That'd be cool. We can do it for less than 1.5, I guess. Where, where the cafetorium is. Yeah. But uh, uh, look at uh, p pricing uh, some sort of lean to situation on that end of the building. Can we take a look at that building that building there we looked at before I think we oh, talked to the people. Worcester. Worcester. Yeah. Worcester he has he has you know, I've contacted him several times Same today time. just to ignore him now. So you're talking like what where the oil tanks were a style lean to like that down on the side of the building. Yeah but you know big enough with like bigger than I mean I'd like to be able to if we could put the brush truck or something in the you know not a big truck but a small truck. I mean, it'd be 
We're running out well, of Even if equipment. you could just put equipment there and your lockers out there compared to along the walls on the inside. Yeah. Now, would it have been cheaper to buy the house on Main Street, put the superintendent down there, put all over and that, and take his garage and everything? I think you can still <laughs> make an offer on that house down there. So yeah, get that parking out. Maybe you should look into that, Chris. Yeah, for offer them money? Well, do you realize what an addition would cost? Craig, you're a construction worker. Just off the top of your head, one the size of that down the building. Come off this roof line, too? No, I, I, I think you'd probably come down lower. Well, then add 90%. Jamie, Jamie, <laughs> hey, Prince built that ice station for Jamie's less than 600000 so. Well, Unfortunately, everything costs quadruple if you involve fire department, town, hospital. Right. You just, School. you've got so many, yeah. Just take on the tax of fire properties and but, some, but somewhere between 60 and 120 could get you a basic. So, yeah, 500,000 more would have my building. How much? Uh, Princeton built that three bay or four bay station for 600,000. Did you room? say 25,000? At least. The problem is everybody knows we're good paid. If it isn't half, we'll just go get more. Yeah, I'll so. just take it. Yeah. Well, we're not in the school department, though, so I don't know if they'll have We'll stay away from Nickerson all day. Yeah. That's I all I got. You know, I didn't want record, record saying this. I really don't think this was Nickerson all day. Well, you know, what I was sitting here when I said they that. They said they would come to every you know, town meeting. To they're probably not the guys to be ticked off at. No, they the didn't come. The bottom of that, the four three point one. They did say I think there was some, they'd be a lot of miscommunication. I'd like to have some answers on that at some point. They've been working on that. That's anyway, right. so um, I, I guess to answer to your question, Brandon, we'll do some research and see what's going on. Yeah, um, we yeah, we'll start some moving ideas that around. You know, I mean, budgets are coming up. Start figuring something, put it in there. Just go down from there. Do you know anybody who works over the paper mill? You can go ask them for a donation. Yeah, I've been trying to get money to do my own stuff in the paper mill, and I can't. So I'm stuck. Dog kennel, don't they? Just no. <laughs> is, is this building on a footing or a slab? This is on a slab. Uh, <coughs> I don't know. This building here? Yeah. I'm guessing a slab. I don't know. Yeah. 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 I mean, it's a whole bunch of things. Buildings? Mm. What was it? Yeah, that that or something? No, I've seen the plans up there. Slab. There's a couple of grand. Yeah, about seven. Yeah. yeah. You and one seven. Eight, eight. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> eight, eight. <laughs> Merlin, were you here when the addition went on? Oh, no, that was way before we were here. Okay. 72 hours on the eight. Yeah, there you go. Now you're getting closer. <laughs> Mike, do you all have set. anything? All you set. all set? All right. Moving on, Councillor, closing comments, Craig? Nothing. Craig has nothing. Uh, Steve? Nothing. Acacia? Nope. All right. The only, uh, I've got two things. Um, where are we on the truck ordinance? I've shipped that off to Roger Hubert to see what's, what he can come up with better than what I've done. Right, can, can you yeah. rattle his cage because somebody has rattled my cage on it? Okay. And the only I other... I want to treat those businesses that still need trucks to come in. Well... This has got to be somehow the offenders that are that are not being your Pepsi delivery trucks or your um, construction Cisco trucks or, or whoever that may be. This is the ones that are lost. That are milled. But well, I mean, because you've still got fuel trucks coming into to Irving, you've still got delivery right. trucks coming right. to, uh, you know, the... Electrical. But there's still no reason why those trucks can't use the truck route. Mm -hmm. They come down to where they need to. Right, now I get... You know, there's some delivery trucks like the Home Depot or fuel oil trucks that obviously there's houses on the avenues that they have to use that. Garbage trucks, things of that nature. There's certain things that we don't have control over. But there's no reason why the Pepsi truck to get down to the businesses couldn't exit through the truck route. Right. I think once you've had that conversation with them, that would be a one-time deal with them. 
Um, and the only other thing, and, and I don't want to harp on this cafetorium project, but you really need to keep your feet on this closely, um, get some of these answers because um, if you're not getting them in a timely fashion, I mean, have we even contacted to see what the difference between the two bids were, what the outfit in Winter Harbor to see apples to apples, apples to oranges, so or apples to Northeast Harbor? Yeah, Northeast yeah, Harbor. yeah he, hasn't, he hasn't contacted them yet. Yeah. So, you know, I, I just think we need to take, unfortunately, a little bit more active role in this project school board still has all the control and all they, all they need, but we just need to make sure that what's being spent is being spent and how it's being spent is being done correctly. That's all I've got to say to that. Unfortunately, we have to do that. It has nothing to do with the school board and, and that it's just that this project has escalated into something bigger than what any of us anticipated that it was going to be. It's not. It's not what it was advertised to anybody, I don't think. Mm -hmm. Well, you know, the, the problem is someone knew that it, was, it had exceeded the cost a, a little more than 10 months ago. And, and, and we're, we really just, you know, December 17th is when the numbers started coming out. Well, with that, we can do a motion for an adjournment. Motion to adjourn. Second. Move to second. All in favor? That's a vote. Thank you very much, guys. Yeah. Okay.